Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to be making a new crosscut sled uh, for my table saw. I had a crosscut sled before, but due to some experimenting, it uh, is no longer accurate. And that's okay, because I've been meaning to make a new one anyway, and um, I won't, because my old one did not have any stop blocks built in. I was just using clamps and a block. So I want to build one that has stop blocks, and I want the stop blocks to be able to be put on without using a router or T-tracks or anything like that. So I'm going to make a slot in here that will work with just using the table saw. I'm going to make that slot using that. So what I have done so far is some of the preliminary work here. Um, the base is going to be made out of, actually most of it is being made out of uh, melamine. But it's actually left over from uh, I, uh, one of my neighbors was getting rid of a, a workbench and this was the top on the workbench before I cut it down which is why there's some kind of obscure holes in it and stuff but they aren't gonna really mess up with my mess with my end result uh, something really nice about melamine is as long as it's not been abused it's very flat and uh, that's good for a crosscut sled sometimes if you buy um, a lot of times they're, uh, people make them out of plywood, and that's fine. I like plywood too, but unless you have high-quality plywood, uh, cheaper plywoods have uh, warps and dips and bows and stuff. And so this is nice because it's very flat, and that's going to be great. So uh, the base I have cut already is about two feet wide because that's how wide the top of the bench was. I didn't really figure there was any reason to make that cut. So I left it. It's just under two feet wide. And right now it's of about 18 and an eighth inches deep, which it doesn't really matter which dimensions you go with as long as you think about what you typically want to be able to cross cut and you kind of work within those dimensions. Make sure your base is big enough for that or whatever your piece of wood work with that. So that's going to be the base. And then the back support is just going to be two strips of melamine that I'm going to um, glue together and put some screws in to make it just a little bit thicker. Um, I cut those down on the table saw so they are also, because they're cut out of the same piece, just under two feet long. Uh, they're the same, you know, same as the top there. And then those are oh, about four inches uh, tall. So that, that's plenty of support at the back. Um, it's probably overkill, but I also want to be able to keep the saw fairly high without cutting it in half because uh, this will be part of the support to the bottom to keep it nice and flattened together once we cut the slit through. So that'll go at the back and that'll get glued and screwed on. And then at the front I have another two pieces of melamine cut from this that are taller because yeah those are about five inches. So at the, at the middle they're going to stay five inches tall. So they're going to stay five inches tall in the center which would be about here. And then I'm going to, oops, going to kind of taper them down, something like that, so that it's tapered down and it gives me a place that I can put my hand and hold on to the sled, but then it'll be taller in the center so that this saw blade can be up higher. Um, so that'll be part of the fence closer to me. It'll go right here. And um, so I will also glue and screw those together, but before I can do that, I need to cut the slit, I'm going to cut a slot in here that's going to kind of be roughly something like this. And I'm going to cut away here and cut away here on the table saw by just running it over the saw over and over and slowly moving over so that I cut this slit out. Because then what that's going to do, looks like it's going to be bigger, is it's going to allow this to slide in there. So this is going to be part of the stop block. The stop block will be assembled from a piece of scrap that I cut two pieces out of that are the same size because I'm making a stop block on either side. So this will be the stop block for one side. It'll be able to sit right there and it's oh two and three quarters inches tall and oh, two and five eighths wide and almost exactly an inch thick. So that'll work for that. So that'll be what sits on the front of the fence here and allows for a stop block for when I'm using the fence. And then it will have, this is a quarter 20 bolt uh, with a wing nut that I can just thumb tighten and a washer. And then this will be what slides inside the front fence there. 
and, uh, and then this bolt will go through it. And then I'll have to cut a slit all the way through here that allows the bolt to slide. And then, because it'll be, you know, through this, allow this to be a stop block. That'll be able to be on either side of the blade or both sides of the blade if I want to make a cut on one end and then the other. And then these are just some strips that are going to go in the miter slots of my table saw. I cut, I don't know, 15 of these the last time I was cutting strips for my uh, table saw so that I had lots of them ready to go for sleds and jigs and stuff. And these are made out of oak. If um, you're not real certain about how to cut the strips for your miter slots, um, you want them to be just a scotch shorter this way than the total height of your saw slot, the slot, uh, because you don't want them to rest on the bottom. You don't want them to bottom out. And then you want them to just fit into the slot on the sides. You'd like just so that they can freely slide back and forth, but not so tight that they're too snug and you don't want them to wobble too much. Um, and maybe ideally these are made out of plywood. I'm not, I'm not certain uh, because of stability, because these will expand and contract a little bit, but being oak, um, I don't, I don't expect there'll be too much movement in this wood. And if there is, I, I guess I can always work with that. I can sand them down a little bit if I need to or something. But anyway, that's what I'm using for the uh, slides that'll go in the slot that'll keep this slide square. So one thing I did is I have decided the orientation that I want the boards that are gonna be the front and the back fence. Or I don't know if they're called a fence, but anyway, the front and the back support. And then I marked them with a V so that I can get them back in that exact same orientation again. Um, and also so that when I'm using, cutting, like in this one, when I'm cutting the slots on the table saw, I don't want to cut the wrong direction or side or something like that. So uh, I marked both sets so that I can line them back up again later. I can go ahead and glue and screw this side together. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll go cut the slots for this one. So melamine being super slick, uh, I think it's a good idea to rough up this surface a little bit uh, before I glue it together because otherwise I'm afraid it won't actually... Um, adhere very well and the screws would probably be just enough by themselves but you know why not over engineer if you can so I'll just rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper and we'll be good to go All right, so the block that I plan on using for the back side of the stop block, so you know the bolt's gonna go through here into this one, and then this will be the one that slides through the inside of the slot. Um, this is almost exactly a half inch. It's actually just under a half inch thick, so I need to make a cut on both boards that's an eighth, eighth inch deep, removing wood from here to here, because that is just wider than this, and I have to do the exact same thing on this board, just mirrored, so that I don't remove it in the wrong spot, if that makes sense. So I can do that, both boards at the same time, um, and just a bunch of different passes across, and moving the fence over little by little, so that I can make that um, slot over to the saw. So if you're worried about the orientation and you're doing this with two boards like this, um, in order to be able to, once you mark your top, if you want to be able to make the cuts each board right after the other, then you need to, and this took me a minute to figure out if, I don't know why it did, but I was having to think really hard. You want to not only flip it over this way, but then also rotate it one turn, kind of like that, um, so that now... If you look at the ends of the board, those two cuts line up so that as I'm making the passes on the table saw, we're good to go. But then I can rotate it, flip it. Now they're lined back up the way I wanted them to be. So that looks pretty slick. I have to clean up those cuts a little bit with a chisel because uh, I don't have a finishing blade on my table saw. I just have a kind of an all purpose rough cut blade and it doesn't always get all the stuff. But my size seems just about right for that to be able to slide through. And I'll just go through and clean these up a bit. And then I can glue them and screw them together. And then, after they're screwed together, 
I can cut the slit that's going to run through here that allows the bolt to slide through. But I got to get it glued and screwed together so that it stays together, obviously. So uh, next phase, clean out, then glue and screw, then cut the slot for the bolt. It should probably be noted that as I was clearing those out, I wasn't super concerned about keeping that floor super, um, I don't know, consistent. Um, if, if I was, I would have used a router plane or a router or something to make sure that that bottom was perfectly flat. But it's not such a big deal because as this is sliding through here and it's bolted and that bolt is sticking out to this block, the stop block that'll be on there, the stop block will actually reference off of the base of the sled. So it doesn't matter if the block that's behind there is 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 not you know perfectly oriented because ultimately if this is referencing off of the back and the bottom it'll always be square because they will be square to each other so it doesn't matter what's going on in there as long as this toggle can slide in there so that's all I was really concerned with and I think we're good worst case scenario if I find out it's too tight in there I can always sand this a little bit um, once I get it all together but I think it's good enough to go. Now we can glue and put it all together. So now I've got the front fence all glued and screwed together and it's sat overnight so the glue is dry. Uh, now I'm going to draw in where I want to cut and all I'm going to actually do is I'm going to draw one side. Uh, I'm going to find the center line and then I'll draw in the curve that I want it to be and I want it to match on this side so actually I'm just going to make that cut on the bandsaw and then I'll take it, put it on this side, trace it, and then I'll have matching cuts rather than trying to, I don't know, make it match exactly. And um, so anyway, I'm not gonna cut that right now, I'm just gonna mark it. And then we're gonna, over on the table saw, we're gonna cut out the slit on this side, the slot, that'll allow the bolt to slide inside there. Uh, so that'll be the next thing we actually cut, but I wanna get this drawn on first, just so that I have the visual while I'm working. the drill press and I have taken both of the blocks that are going to slide inside that slot and I've marked the center point and we're going to countersink a half inch hole that'll be big enough for the bolt head to sit in so that it can recess completely and then after we've countersunk that we'll use a quarter inch bit to drill a hole the rest of the way through so that the bolt can go through the block. So I think I've got figured out where the slot needs to go for this. The, um, you can see I've put marks here that line up with the edge of the slot down there. And then I, you know, I measured off the halfway point and then basically left just a little extra clearance for the bolt um, on each side. So that looks like it's gonna be just about right. I don't think it's critical that it's dead on perfect. It just needs to be big enough for the bolt to slide through. There's the lines, the shaded, well it's not very easy to see because I did some erasing. This shaded section right here is what's going to be cut away. And if we slide our block in there, that looks just about perfect. So over to the table saw, make a couple of passes to cut this away. First test run, let's see how we did. Stuck on something. All right, so I have a minor dilemma. This, the, um, these don't slide in very far because there's squeeze out inside there that's stopping them from sliding. So we have to clear out some of that squeeze out, which luckily it pops off pretty easy. We're gonna try to use this long piece of cut off from oak flooring to kind of ram down through and see if I can get some of that glue off of there and clean that up a little bit. All right, 
So, learn from my mistakes. Do a better job of gluing. I think I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding on that edge. Alright, here we go again. We have uh, cleared out most of those glue squeeze outs, hopefully, and uh, we'll see if this actually slides through. Ooh, better! All right, slot success. Careful with your glue. Now I'm gonna sand these edges a little bit just so that they don't chip out more and because they're kind of sharp. All right, so that is the center line of the slot if this is sitting in front of it. So now I gotta find center here and then put a quarter inch hole through that so that then it can act as the stop block on the outside. So here's the two stop blocks and uh, I'm going to use a countersink bit just to put a little bit of a chamfer on the edge of those holes. Yep, that'll work. So it turns out the bottom of my fence that I plan to use uh, for the part closest to me uh, is not quite square to this face. So that's an easy fix. It's probably because of my glue up. I didn't probably quite get the boards aligned. So all I got to do is run that one pass on the table saw and just take a thin shaving off of there so that then that will be square to the, to the face. So that should work just fine. All right, so here's the fence that'll be closest to me, the user. And uh, here's the part that the piece will reference off of for what we're using. And uh, as we put our square on here, you can see everything is very well square to that face. You can't see any light under that square as you look down that. So that is good to go. Now to put a little chamfer on that front edge a little, for a little dust clearance. There you go. So you could of course do that on the table saw at a 45 or a router or whatever you want to do. But something to create a little bit of clearance right along this bottom edge for dust and stuff to be when that's sitting on your base. Because I took a pass off of here, uh, made this a little bit thinner, now my stop blocks are of course a little bit too long. So I think I'm going to get a measurement on how those should be. How long they should be so we'll just see where they should be and put a line so now you can see the lines that I made on the stop blocks if you look up at the top there's a thin line up there that was made by the knife and I'll probably wait to cut those until I actually get the sled built because then I'll have a really nice, easy, accurate way of cutting those lines. And uh, and then I can also ease up on them in case, um, you know, if I want to leave them a little long or short, kind of see how things fit. So I'll probably do that. Once I get the whole thing assembled, I'll finish cutting these down. So the fence that's farther from the user also needs to be flattened on the bottom. Uh, real quick pass on the saw here, I'll take care of that. Decided to put the runners on the bottom of the sled, and uh, you need a couple of things. You need some glue, you need the runners, you need the bottom of the sled, and a couple pieces of paper, and uh, some pennies, or some washers, or something um, that will fit in your miter slot that is uh, similar thickness. So you got a couple of them. Washers work, pennies work, um, stuff like that. So the, the purpose of these are so that you can place them underneath your runners because they are, if you just put them down into miters, they don't stick up. They're actually below. That was That's intentional. You don't want them to be the full thickness of your miter slot in case they swell a little or there's some sawdust down in the slot. Um, that way your sled always sits flush to the surface of your saw. So you want them to be a little short. So you have to shim them up a bit so that they sit proud and you can then uh, get them glued to your sled. So 
That now sticks up above the surface of the saw just a little bit, which is plenty. So we do that. There we go. Both runners stick up just a little bit. And then the paper is to shim the runners out. You could shim them out or you could shim them in either way. Um, but no matter what you do, you're probably going to have a little bit of play in your runners. And the way you make up for that is you shim the runners either both out or both in so that then one side, no matter what you do, is running on the miter and there's no play in your sled when you get all said and done. So all I have is a couple little slim pieces of paper that I'm just going to wedge in at the tip to reduce the play. And I'm put this one back here. So I'm shimming both of my runners out. And that should help. Get that out of the way. Now my adhesive of choice here is a bit of CA glue. I'm going to use this because it sets up quick. Without the activator, it gives you uh, five minutes to cure, 10 to 20 seconds to adjust. So as I set the, um, the sled down on these, I need a couple seconds to kind of square things up a little bit. Now this, at this stage, you don't have to have the sled perfectly square to anything. You just want it close so that it, it doesn't look ridiculous. Um, so some people will use their fence, some people would use I, you know, whatever you got that's kind of uh, square to your blade. I'm just going to use the front of my saw, and I have marked on here the center where I want that to line up with the saw blade, and I have a mark up here on the front of my fence that is actually right where the saw blade sits. So my runners are not as long as my sled, but I do want them to sit back from the front edge a little bit. Careful not to get any glue on your soft top, but you do it cleans up really easy when you don't glue your sled to your saw. Here we go. Now this is thick CA glue. Um, you don't want to use too thin, otherwise it's not going to beat up and not work. So. There we go. So now that's got a five minute cure time. So I can come back in five minutes, pick that up, flip it over, countersink a couple holes, and screw the runner to the sled so that it doesn't move. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the sled runners, I'm going to cut out the top portion of the uh, fence that will be closest to me uh, so that it will be a little bit shorter so I can get my hands over the top a little bit easier. So you can see I have marked off where I'm going to cut, and I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. match that cut on the other side, I'm just going to use the off cut and trace it and then cut along that line because then I didn't have to try to draw it perfect on both sides. That looks pretty good. Now I'll just take and I'm going to round off these edges a little bit with just some sandpaper, nothing fancy do that off camera. So it's been over five minutes, been more like ten, since I laid this down on top of that glue, which has got a uh, five minute cure time, so it should be good to go for now. Now fingers crossed the CA glue will hold to the bottom of the sled. There we go. Clean this up. And now to go attach these with screws. The screws of choice here are a three quarter inch number six screw that I will drill and countersink into these, uh, being careful not to shift them. That CA glue is brittle and I don't want to put too much pressure on these and bust them loose and lose their placement. All right, let's go see if it works.
nice snug fit. I can't wiggle it from side to side. Maybe even a little snug, but a little bit of paste wax and use. I'll fix that right up. I like it. Time to put on the back fence. Now to put on the back fence, I, um, I'm going to set the sled on top of the fence upside down. And by back fence, I mean the one that's farther from me. I know some people switch those around, but whatever. Um, so in order to set that on top of there, I need something that's the same height. So I just have a couple of pieces of wood here that are the right size for that to work. Now for the back fence, it does not matter so much if it's square to anything. Uh, you just want to make sure that the bottom of that fence is good and flat so that it helps hold your sled flat. You're not referencing off that face so for your cuts, so it's really not going to matter. You just got to make sure that it's flat. It doesn't necessarily need to be square. Got it pretty much lined up where I want it to be, and I can drill countersink and screw that together. And maybe I should use a little glue. Let's use a little glue. I did sand the other side of the sled surface that melamine's real slick. So I did rough that up a little bit with some sandpaper so that um, hopefully this glue will hold a little bit better. I'm not sure it's going to really do much at all, but it makes me feel better that it's there. Now when you're placing these screws, you do have to be careful. Just make sure you don't screw right in the middle because you don't want your saw to run into a screw. The glue has sat overnight on the back fence there. It's good and solid. Now it's time to um, attach the front fence, or the fence that's closer to me, at least temporarily. So to do that, we, we don't want to make it permanent yet because I can't guarantee at this point that it would be square to the blade after the cut is made. So all we're going to do is we're just going to put two screws in. One over here that's going to act as a pivot screw, and then one here or so that's going to just act as a temporary screw until we get this dialed in as far as its angle relative to the blade after we've made the uh, made that first cut through here. So um, all I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to for now square it off to the base because you know I used the front of the saw for that so it's probably relatively close and then we will go over and figure that out, dial it in. So quick note before I make this cut, I um, added a few screws to this fence. Uh, as I was putting the screws in the bottom, I noticed it actually separated a little bit down here. So obviously the glue hasn't worked. The glue does not really stick very well to this plasticky surface, but um, I think the, screw, the screws are enough to make it work for now. If not, you can always take that fence off and put a new one on later. So uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this squared up. I made sure that the blade was perfectly 90 degrees. I used my square, checked it with the blade up high so that I could make sure that there is no error here so that I'm cutting a nice perfect cut into this. I've got the fence attached and now I have to check to see how square we are relative to the blade and there's lots of ways that people go about doing this you can square to your fence if you know it's perfect at least to start you can square uh, to the blade you can you know there's lots of methods what I'm gonna do to start things off is I've uh, I've just got my square here which I know is rather accurate and I'm gonna square it off to the blade um, the way I'm going to do that is I will set the square with this portion on the fence and this portion will actually go against the blade and I'll use that to check to see how much I need to move this. So I've got a, the pivot screw over here and then depending on how this is I can move this forward or backward to adjust for square and um, the only thing you really have to make sure is that this part that's resting on the blade doesn't hit one of the teeth because typically uh, the teeth are wider than the, the normal part of the blade. So 
Um, just make sure you don't hit one of the teeth so that you're flat against the blade and you can kind of tell what you got to do. So if I put this here, I'm hitting a tooth, so I'm going to move the blade and... All right, just to show you this from my angle, here's looking down at the sled and you can see here's the square, there's the blade, and we got it pressed up against the blade and I am off just a little bit. If you look really close, there's a little bit of a gap on this end of the blade that there isn't on the top end of the blade. And you can tell when you go to, so right now, the square is flush against the fence here. But if I go to flush it up against the blade, you can see it shifts a little bit right over here. And you can see that gap open up when I shift it back and forth. So that tells me that the left side of my fence needs to come back just a scotch. So I'm going to move that a little bit before I start making test cuts so that I save myself some time, hopefully. All right, so I'm ready to move my fence just a little bit, and I don't want it to move much, so I'm actually going to clamp it in place here while I remove the screw. All right, so I remove that screw, and I'm going to mark that screw hole so that I don't use it again, because obviously if you use that again, by mistake, you will throw your fence off because that hole's not lined up square. So, mark that hole, and I will move the fence just a little bit. And then I will drill a new hole, put in another screw again, and then kind of check again before we make test cuts. So, I'm going to shift this, oops, too much. Just a little bit. I'm ready to drill the hole. Now we're going to put in the new screw into that new hole. Check again. Well, didn't move enough. Rinse and repeat. Alright, looks like we're square. All right, before I make my test cut, I'm gonna cut the back here a little bit higher, and I'm also gonna cut a little bit higher here uh, with a little bit of tape over it so that I get less chip out like I did after I realized how bad it was chipping out when I was cutting the initial slot. So I'll cut up a little bit higher so that that zero clearance is a little bit cleaner, um, and then I'll make my test cut. So, here we go. Alexa, turn on dust collector. Hopefully we can show you here. Here's the board I just cut. I put the cut on this side, and we're gonna hold this up. The square nice and flush on the bottom. And if we look through, look at all that. It's tight down on the bottom, but you can see daylight up towards the top. So what that tells me is that I need to move the fence back just a little bit on the left side. All right, so I fiddled with the fence a bit more and I finally got it square enough that I'm happy with it. And um, to do that, I had to move that back side of the fence back maybe two millimeters, give or take. And um, so now it's square. And to figure out that it's at least square enough for me, what I did is I took this board, which I used this face, which I know is flat, against the fence. And then I took a cut off of this side. And then I checked for square. So I'll show you. This is a very accurate square, and with it up against that edge, when I hold it up to the light, there is no light passing through behind that, which for me, that is square enough. If I wanted to be more accurate, I could do uh, the five cut method, which if you don't know what that is, there's lots of videos out there about doing the five cut, but how square is square, I'm not sure that it would do me any good to get any more accurate, because I'm only as square as I can hold the piece and as I'm pushing the sled and there's some variances in the process no matter what you do. Um, and for the woodworking that I do, square to a uh, handheld square, as far as I'm concerned, is square. That's good enough for me 
for what I'm doing, and uh, I don't ever really need to be any more accurate than that. So, uh, after I squared the sled fence, I put in a few more screws along the fence to secure it and keep it nice and stable. And then the next thing to do, I like to put a little block over the section here so that as the blade comes out, there's no chance of me getting a thumb in there, which I'm usually very, very careful about, but you'd hate, you know, to risk it. So um, better safe than sorry, and it really doesn't do anything to just add a block on there. So I'll just put a little scrap paper down, this little spacer here to keep it the block up a little bit. And this is just a piece of two by four that I've squared. And then I will glue that right there. And then I'll clap it in place. If you recall, I had to chop down the fence and make it a little shorter, so now my stop blocks are too tall, but that's fine, because now I can cut those down on the sled. So that'll be my next phase, is to cut down the stop blocks just a little bit, so that they're the appropriate size, and then I will have my sled up and running. The next thing I want to do is, if you can see, I have marked a shaded area here. I'm going to use my hand router here with a little fence on it. Uh, I got a quarter inch bit in there and I'm going to route a slit right here for the stop block. So when I'm not using the stop block or when the sled is being stored, I can then slide this over and it'll be over far enough that it won't stick out past the edge and I'll know where those stop blocks are so that I don't lose them. So, I think that might be the last thing and then the sled will be all done. Here is the sled all said and done and it turned out pretty nice. Um, it should be noted that if you wanted to make these cuts for where these stop blocks are sitting on the back side here, um, obviously this is turned around for this little bit of the video here. Uh, if you wanted to make these cuts for these to sit on the back, uh, you wouldn't have to use a router. You could, of course, do that. Um, you could do it before you attach this fence. You could do it on the table saw. If you have a nice vertical jig, you could cut it on the table saw. You could cut it on the band saw. You could cut it with a hand saw. Lots of different tools you could do that with if you don't have a router, um, just so you have some options. And I think this turned out really nice. One thing I would do different if I was going to do this over again is I would probably invest a little money and buy some plywood to use for this fence here. I use this melamine because it's what I had on hand, but the hassle of the glue squeeze out and it separating because the glue doesn't stick to it all that well was kind of a pain and probably not worth it. I should have just uh, found some scrap plywood or went and got a sheet of plywood and used that instead. But this is what I had. It did end up working out. It's not too bad. Um, and the end result is fine. It was just a little more work to get here. So the slots work great. All you do is, you know, take the blocks off the back from storage and you just slide them in. No trouble. You can tighten them down with the wing nut. They stay in place really well. They're nice and square. And I think it's nice to have two in case you're doing a piece that you want to have a cut on each end. That works out great. So there we go, that works out nice. Slides back and forth really well. Now it is coming on winter, so the humidity in the shop is pretty low. And uh, I'm sure when summer rolls around and the humidity snakes up, the, uh, the oak runners will probably swell a little bit. And I may have to give them a little bit of a sanding just to loosen them up in there. But I don't wanna do that now because I want them to stay stuck tight through the winter. Um, and we'll see what happens once summer comes. Other than that, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. If I can be of any help, you shoot me a message or leave a comment or whatever works for you. Find me on Instagram, anything like that. And um, have a good one.